Welcome to Library Lovers, Jane. We are so thrilled to have you on the show tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Look, to start off, can you tell us where you're talking to us from? Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm in Melbourne, um, where I live. Um, specifically, I'm at, at home. It's actually um, kind of bed and bath time in our house around now. So um, I'm hiding in the spare room, <laughs> to be honest. It's not hugely glamorous, but it's, uh, at least it's got a door I can shut, shut and keep everybody else away. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm coming to you today from South, Southwest Victoria, and we have had the most glorious sunshine today. It's a, a real treat, isn't it, to have that spring weather coming through? Yeah, it is. And especially when so much of the state is really stopping with the, the, the floods and things. So, yeah, we've been very lucky. It sounds like where you live as well. So, um, yeah, that's a, yeah, it's, 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 it's good to, it's good to be, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's lucky that not, you know, we haven't been affected by that as well. Goes out to the different people that are impacted by that. Um, now, Jane, your new book, Exiles, immediately shot to the top of the bestseller list, and it's held very firmly in that number one spot. Firstly, huge congratulations. And secondly, can you tell us how you celebrate successes like that? Is it champagne? Do you have a big party? Do you buy something special? Because I know that some of the authors, Natasha Lester, for instance, she buys herself a, something special from Tiffany that reminds her of each book. Uh, is there anything that you have a tradition with uh, your books when they hit the bestseller charts? Do you know, I, I don't, and you, you've made me think that I should, actually, because it's absolutely is something, you know, we're celebrating, and it's so lovely to see kind of readers and, you know, and, and yeah, library borrowers and, and booksellers, you know, embrace the book, um, you know, so, I mean, it absolutely is a moment worth marking. I have to say, um, normally when the book comes out, I'm on, I'm on kind of a book tour, so I'm not at home. I'm kind of usually in a hotel somewhere about to do an event that night. So that's kind of what happened again this year. Um, but you've made me think I really should actually get that champagne on ice, I think. I think so. And you have done some very extensive touring as well. I've seen you all over the place. You've been a very busy lady. Yeah, and it's been great. I mean, it's so good because last time, especially when um, the Survivors, the last book came out, I was I was in lockdown in Melbourne, as you know, a lot of people were, and um, so I didn't get um, I didn't get a chance to even leave the house, and I never even saw the book, you know, in a library or in the um, in the bookshops until I think like like November or something, like months later. So. You know, it was a very kind of um, solitary experience. So it was really, it was really, I think, extra special this time to kind of be able to get out and actually, you know, meet people and um, sort of, just sort of, I don't know, just see the book in the wild. So I think that's a really important moment as an author, as you would know, when you actually see it out, it, that's when it kind of becomes real, I think. It does. And then I'm sure that when you're out and about that you'll just see people reading it on trains, on buses, just sitting down at the beach in the summertime, you'll see lots of people curled up with this good book, I'm sure. I hope so. I actually actually rarely see, sometimes I, I can sort of count on one hand the amount of times I've seen people actually, I've seen like one, a couple of times on a tram, I saw someone actually at the hotel where I was staying when a book came out reading it by the pool and I was, I was like so tempted to kind of, I don't know, I don't even know what I would have said though, are you enjoying it? I mean like what if they, you know, puts them in the spot a bit so, um, but it's, it's, it's really, it is really fun, the occasion when I kind of do see someone reading it is this, it's so, it's so like surreal but yeah it's great. Well, if it's any indication, I've spoken to quite a few people in the last few weeks and said, oh, we've got Jane coming on Library Lovers. And so many people said, oh, I've just bought myself a copy or I've just started or I've just finished it. And I'm not sure if I, it's only because I, I have lots of friends that are very book loving and, and love a good read, or, but it certainly happens to be the book on everyone's lips when I'm speaking about books. So I think uh, that kind of, you know, is a huge credit to the fact that you write such wonderful books. Oh, that's really kind. Oh, thank you. And say thank you, friends, as well. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, as I said before, it is a spoiler-free zone here on Library Lovers, but I can say that I particularly like the very satisfy satisfying ending of Exiles. Uh, and I know you're a really dedicated plotter as well. And as someone who has just handed in a you know, first draft manuscript and really wishing I'd done a bit more plotting when I'd done that, Chat. Can you please share with us some of your wisdom when it comes to plotting? Oh God, yeah! Congratulations on completing your first draft, by the way. That's I know, I know that's kind of a big moment, isn't it? In like the process. So, yeah, well done for, for reaching that. I think, yeah. Look for me. Um, I mean, I've always been, I've always leaned towards being, um, being a planner. Um, I just personally find it. Um, it, I find it make, allows me to be more creative because it allow, planning the book in advance. It allows me to test out ideas without committing to the time and effort it requires to write the words. So, you know, I can try out an idea in in planning form and see is this is this the best route or is there something better and I can kind of you know test quite a lot of different you know 
routes for the book to take, um, you know, because you only have a limited amount of creative energy. And I think if, you know, it's better for me, I find to save that until I'm actually sure that the plan is exactly where it needs to be. And I know what's going to happen. And then I can really focus it on that point where it really matters. I love that. And so in terms of an actual physical uh, planning document, is that um, colourful cards or post-it notes stuck all over your walls? Or is that uh, a notebook? Or is that an Excel spreadsheet or an actual Word document? What does it look like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, um, I'm not a hugely visual person. So it's very, it's very computer based. So there's two different forms that really help me. One is um, initially when I'm kind of very first thinking about that initial kind of core of the idea I don't even really go to the computer I just um think about it as I go around my day-to-day -day life and every time I have an idea I put it in the notes app on my phone um and I write down every single thing whether it's a good idea or a bad idea it goes in the app and then um when I sort of got to the point where I feel like I've got a quite a good idea of the kind of beginning middle end um and and some characters I need to start committing it to paper then I will take those notes and I put them in a word document in sort of the best order I can it might be by character it might be by chronological if I can if I can sort of make that work and that will then expose some of the gaps and then I try and sort of fill those gaps so it's all very much on the word document and then I would spend a long time like months and months with that word document just fleshing it out and you know expanding until I've sort of got a chapter by chapter plan by the end. I love it I love it and I'm going to try and take some <laughs> of that down so that it can make the process a little bit easier. We have lots of people who are very keen writers that uh, tune in to Library Lovers too. So I'm sure there'll be some people, you know, who are trying to use that information to their advantage too. Well, I, I think, um, you know, I also would sort of add as well that there is no really right way to do this. I mean, there's so many successful authors. I mean, you've, you know, you've published books, you know, not not by that method, you know, and 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 so many authors don't find planning works for them. They, they do enjoy that sort of spontaneity. Um, I don't know, you know, but I think, I mean, that that is what always works for me. But I think really whatever helps you get the words on the page is absolutely the right way to, to pursue the writing. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree with that too, Jane. Now, uh, I'm a keen baker and a green thumb, and I always like to share what's happening in my kitchen and my garden and during Library Lovers. I'd love to know what's happening in your kitchen or your garden, Jane. Yeah, so we're actually having renovation works down in the garden at the moment, so there's not much happening there. Um, but in my kitchen, what's always happening is I've always got, I've got my trusty teapot here that my friend Pamela gave me as a birthday present. Um, and um, because I always have... I always have tea on the go, especially when I'm writing. I think it's really, I don't know, it's just, it's this, it's, I, I sort of mainline it, you know, it's just something that kind of helps me. And I, I drink it actually, it's a, little, it's a little bit sad. I was debating whether to change, but I, I drink from this mug, mug my parents made, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's, the, it's they made me a mug of the dry. <laughs> So, that is fantastic. So I sort of, I sort of drink it from this. It's quite a good mug, and it sort of gets me in the heads, you know, headspace a little bit. So um, those are kind of my kind of writing rituals as far as I have them. I like that. Well, I've been uh, baking from a new book. It's coming out uh, by Amelia Jackson and it's called First Cream, the Butter and Sugar. And it is a beautiful, glorious book. It's uh, out in November, but Amelia was one of the MasterChef uh, winners that came back on recently, but they've just got some really, really beautiful illustrations and whatnot. And I made these brownies and she had them in a checkerboard pattern. So it's just simply every second slice has got icing sugar dust on it. But I tell you what, my children are very excited about the second that we finish Library Lovers and the camera goes off, those brownies will be um, their dessert. So they're all that's excited amazing. about that. <laughs> and that's been great. Now, if people wanted to ask a question of Jane or of Richard or of Nadia tonight, you just need to pop your little questions in the chat function. Um, if you have chat enabled in your settings on Zoom, sometimes it can be a little bit glitchy, but uh, otherwise you can direct message them through. So the other question I want to ask is libraries. They're always really special to writers. Jane, can you tell us something that makes uh, libraries special to you, whether it's from your time as an author or a mother or, or as a little girl? 
Yeah, I mean, I have a really active um, relationship with the libraries um, at the moment. I mean, I always have, but particularly now, um, now I have kids. So, I mean, every, I have to say one of my favorite things is what I currently do now, which is every Monday, me and my son, Ted, who is two, we go to the story time. Kids, they love it. You know, we do so like fun stories and you know, songs with a parachute work, which is a lovely sort of treat at the end. And um, it's just, and it's such a kind of lovely morning. It's, it's, it's a great way to start the week. And I think the reason I do it is I really want my, you know, my children to have really positive associations with that. And I mean, it's such a, it's such a great way to kind of, because he thinks it's fun. You know, it is fun. Like it's fun for me. It's fun for him. And I hope that that will be something that he will kind of carry with him as he gets older. Yeah, I think that's fantastic, setting up those beautiful memories and associations with books and libraries and, and fun things to do with mum. That's lovely. Um, now, back when I was considering segueing from journalism to fiction, I mainlined lots of podcasts. And one of the very fantastic pieces of advice that I received early on was from yourself, Jane. And you were talking about uh, studying. And it was just a prompt that I needed to sign up for a Write Your First Draft course. Now, for the other writers that are listening today that are a bit nervous about, you know, putting money towards studying the craft of fiction, or, or perhaps they feel like it's something they should instinctively know, especially if they've worked with words, can you please share that lovely piece of advice that you gave um, back years and years ago about investing in your craft? Yeah, I mean, I think that the longer version of this answer is, I think, for you, is the TEDx talk, I think you, you're referring to, which is about a sort of 10 minute talk, and I kind of talk about... Um, kind of um you know sort of the, the 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 process behind creativity and how there's a lot of skills you can take from your your you know your everyday job we all have skills that will help us in writing because I, I my you know my experience is that writing is is a skill like any other skill and you know it's things like playing the piano or learning to sew or learning to dance and it's not something that you is realistic to expect that you know just because you love it and you know maybe you've even worked with it in a different format that you know, it's completely, um, you know, not only acceptable, but I think advisable to try and hone that skill and, and, and accept that there will be a learning process. And, um, you know, so for me, that came in a form um, because I know I remember writing that, wanting to write a debut novel. And it's such a scary place to be because you it really is like a mountain to climb and, you know, be able to break it down and get a little bit of, you know, advice or help or motivation in any way that works for you is, you know, is is worth pursuing. Um, so for me, that took the form. I did a short online course, which was great. But I think any online course, you know, would have would have done the same thing because what it gave me was that external um, kind of deadline and a little bit of like, you know, even if it was artificial pressure, it was that expectation that I would submit my chapters when I was expected to and be working on this novel. And I, I didn't know at the time. I felt like I don't know if I can write a novel, but I know I can do my homework. And that was kind of the 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 sort of the help that I got with that um but I I think you know and it's I mean I'm sure you would have found this too that when you know writing it is it is a developed skill and each time me and my whole planning process and the way I approach the books and everything every single time you learn something new and the, the great thing is you get to take that with you to future books so you know as hard as it is especially that first time out it will never be that hard again because you will gain those skills so just give yourself the time um, to you know and, and give yourself permission to 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 work through it and, and know that you can get better at it yeah I think that is really important because it is it is a long process but if you've got those little bits of um, yeah those deadlines and that self-belief and someone else cheering you on as well from the sidelines really does make a difference yeah, yeah. absolutely and yeah and that's right and I mean I think it's sort of it, it is really daunting committing to doing that so that big time and effort is taken for a novel but I mean the rewards are so if it's something you've wanted for a long time um you know I mean you know yourself I mean the rewards of finishing that first manuscript is just it's yeah it's life-changing I mean it's still one of my favorite moments in the whole process that that day when I kind of finished my first draft those words the end for the fact that we've got you know 100,000 words in every book those last two that you write and they don't even make it into the finished published copy <laughs> of the book but they are so important aren't they to an author yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we've got lots of questions flooding through. There's plenty of people listening from Beachport in South Australia, which is wonderful. Um, we'll get to a couple of the questions in a moment. I've got a couple more. Firstly, Jane, I'd love to know, do you have an Australian book recommendation that you think people might be interested in picking up and reading? Yeah, I do. I do. I actually, um, uh, so um, this one is, is um, 
I love this one. It's Sally Hepworth. This is not the cover. This Australian cover. This, the Australian book is out. This is a, a proof cover. Um, so it doesn't look like this, but Sally Hepworth, The Soulmates. Um, and it's out any day. I think it's out this week, actually. Um, and it is so good. If you know Sally Hepworth, she writes these really cool, fun, twisty kind of domestic noir you know, like readable with like just the right amount of kind of grit and, and great tension, really page turning. Um, I love this one. It was about a family that moved to a clifftop house and vote quite quickly. They realized that it's a quite a, um, this sounds worse than it is, it's quite a popular suicide spot. And the husband gets involved with talking these people down um, and he managed to save almost all of them except for one. And um, it's about the kind of relationship that, you know, that sort of unravels from there. It was great. So Soulmate by Sally Hepworth is my, um, yeah, check it out. It's coming out like any day now. That's fantastic. I've loved Sally's book. And I know that she's doing a lot of touring as well. And some of her events have also sold out. So uh, people should get onto her website and have a look if they want to try and catch her in person. Now, I think we've got one more question before we go to audience questions. Uh, the Dry was absolutely brilliant on the big screen. I loved seeing the movie and I got quite excited. I got shh by the audience because I was saying to my friends, look, there's Jane, there she is over there. That's her walking behind the funeral ceremony. Now, what was it like being an extra on the movie set? And will you be on the, the next movie, Force of Nature, is being turned onto the big screen too? Um, firstly, thank you so much for spotting me because <laughs> that, is, that is so rare. Because <laughs> yeah, it was. How was it? It was long, um, but no, it was great fun. It was so. It was so fun. So we, uh, yeah, we got to go on the set for the drive for two days. You know, see the cast and meet you know Eric Banner himself, which is you know always a great day. Um, and um, yeah, and then and then sort of we got to be come me and some of my friends and family got to be in it. Um, it you know, we definitely filmed for two days. It's like it's like four seconds, as you know. So yeah, you can't look down or you miss us. But it was really good. Um, and then yeah, and Force of Nature, the sequel is um is the filming has finished. It was filmed in Victoria over winter, and they're into the editing process now. Um, so I no, I'm not in this one. Unfortunately, we tried to make it work just to. The timing, it was over school holidays and there weren't that many scenes with out the core, yeah, we a lot of scenes just had the core cast. So um yeah, despite best, best efforts, I don't not in this one, but I did get to go to sets and kind of again meet, you know, my best friend Eric Banner. Um and um you know, and see, it looks, so it looks good. You know, it, it, you know, the setting was beautiful and they seemed really happy with what they were getting. So yeah, I haven't seen any footage from it yet, but fingers crossed, it's the same team behind the drive. So I'm really hopeful you know, they'll, you know, they did such a great, beautiful job with that. I love that adaptation. So I'm really optimistic about this one. Excellent. I can't wait to see it on the big screen. Now I've hogged you for long enough. We're going to get to some of these wonderful audience questions. Uh, the first person, Calabrese asks, uh, Jane, what made you decide on the South Australian setting for Exile? And have you visited the SA wine region? I know the answer to this one, but uh, I look forward to hearing it from you. Yeah, I absolutely visited. My gosh, yeah, try and stop me. I mean, one of the best parts is on research trips. And I have to say, this was one of the best research trips. So um, the, yeah, the, the, the setting was just gorgeous throughout about um, for, for exiles. And um, part of the reason, um, I, I mean, it was a few things. It's a, sort of the creative reason was I, I really wanted a place um, that had, you know, like with any mystery exiles has a few sort of dark threads running through, but it's got a lot of light in this novel as well. And I wanted a place to really, you know, reflected that. Um, Fork is a, he's a small town guy at heart. I wanted a setting that kind of reflected that sort of aspect of his personality. And um, and also he's reunited this novel with um, Greg Rayco, who we met in the dry, whose family is originally from South Australia. So that was kind of sort of turned my head in di that direction initially, but yeah, I loved, God, I love that research trip. It was so fun. It was such a beautiful <laughs> setting to kind of bring to the page. Absolutely. And speaking of Fork, uh, Aaron Fork, played by Eric Banner in the movie, but an absolute superstar in three of your books. How are you feeling about farewelling him, Jane? Uh, Donna wants to know, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love to know. It's the last Aaron Fork book is it is it quite sad are you relieved or is it all those feelings oh it, I'm, I'm I'm sad really I mean it but I'm 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 sort of comfortable with the decision but yeah I mean it's it's you know he's been with me since page one of book one you know I love writing about him um and it's not um and for me I I went into exiles knowing this was going to be the final journey final book for him and the reason for that is that I, I feel like in fiction endings are as important as beginnings and I really wanted to give him an ending that was considered and thought out and right for his character I didn't just want to kind of um I, I think as an author I think it's really important to kind of put aside any other um you know pressures 
to continue past the point where you really know as the author, you know, that, that's that when to say when. And, um, you know, he deserves a good considered ending and the entire exiles was entirely built around him so it was lovely because I got to kind of it's, it was kind of like my big sort of 300 page farewell letter to him I, you, knowing it's the last one you can leave everything on the field everything was in there and it, I'm really pleased with how it kind of came together so I wanted to it, it was it was exactly the sort of book I kind of hoped it would be when I, I first thought of it. I think it's a wonderful farewell and for those people that haven't yet read it they'll be very pleased with um, Aaron's ending. Uh, Deb has given a bit of a shout out to Monica and her kids were young 10 years ago she said she does a fantastic job of it as well as a side gig in stand-up comedy which is exciting oh, uh, we've got I a know that that's, 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 that's good to know <laughs> that would make for a very good children's entertainer and keeping their attention I can see why she'd be yeah. popular <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah it doesn't surprise me she's very she's very good I say so you can keep your attention with three-year-olds I think you can keep, keep your attention with anybody so <laughs> absolutely a very tough crowd <laughs> Uh, we've got a question from Lou, who's an aspiring author in Mudgee, and she says, two of my favourite writers. Well, that's lovely. Thank you, Lou. Uh, she's currently reading uh, Denzian, which is by James Mackenzie Watson, a fantastic new rural uh, crime voice, isn't he? Um, she wants to know what else you're reading and your writing, reading choices when you're drafting your own work, as in, do you read in that genre still? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And the answer is no, not really. Um, I actually, one of the, I think the biggest downsides of becoming an author, I don't know if you find this, but um, I actually, my reading has kind of falls off a cliff when I'm writing. I can't, I find it very hard to keep my story in my head and then engage in the way I need to with a book. So I find myself kind of going back to sort of to my old favourites, books I've read before. And, and quite specifically, I, I try and read um, depending on what I'm trying to do in the book at the time, I try and read um, authors that do something really well that I'm trying to emulate. So for actually for Exiles, I, two people I read a lot of, um, again, I've read them before, so it was sort of revisiting, but I read a lot of Margaret Atwood because I just, I think her sort of crispness of language was something, I, you know, it, it just always kind of you know, it sort of makes me want to do better. And um, another one was Marion Keys, who, you know, has just writes these beautiful kind of um, relationships. And I think the, the kind of warmth she injects in relationships while still kind of tackling quite gritty subjects um, has, is something I've really always admired because that is not easy to do. No, Marion Keys does it so well. She's one of my very firm favourites. So I'm with you on that one, Jane. Lovely. Now we have got a few more questions, but what we'll do is we'll copy them out and hopefully we'll be able to get back to you, um, get those questions to you a little bit later. But Jane, our time is up with you tonight. We have been so delighted to have you on Library Lovers. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you to, um, to everybody involved in the Library Network for giving so much to, you know, authors, but also readers as an avid user myself. I mean, I don't know where I would be without them. It's given me so much pleasure over the years and now I can see my children involving. So thank you so much. It's such a fabulous resource. So yeah, shout out to everybody who um, makes it possible. Wonderful. Well, that's been Jane Harper. Uh, her new book, Exiles, is out now with Pam McMillan in all good bookstores and libraries and also available in the digital format to borrow through the Libby app. And you can find her on social media at Jane Harper Author. She also has a website which has all her details on where you can purchase these fabulous books. 